Hey, Brian, how's it going there today? Good, how are you? Great, really appreciate your time here, and I want to talk about Grandpa Metal first, if that's okay? Yeah, absolutely. So I've read that the album was six years in the making, and I've also read that <laughs> your part with Corey Taylor was recorded about five years ago. Was that the first part that was recorded for the album? Uh, yeah, it's one of the first tracks. I think we also did um, uh, Satan is Kind of a Dick around then, too. That was the first that was the first original track I wrote for the record. And then uh, we, we did that cover, The Fox. Yeah, about that long ago. Myself having the nutty schedule that I have. And then, uh, you know, my producer's busy, Scotty and everybody else I wrote with, Brendan Small and, and um, you know, Joe Troman. We all have insane schedules. And this was a priority, but then, you know, just life and other things got in the way. But and the last year was when we, you know, really buckled down and finished it up. Were any of the recording sessions done with everybody in the same room? I'd have to imagine with that many stars from that many cities that most of it was done over email and exchanging files that way. Yeah, all the solos were done uh, with exchanging files. Yeah, and then um, Scott, we did some gang vocals together, but most of it, most of it is uh, people just sending in their parts or doing going to my producer's house, Jay Rustin's house, where he has a home studio and and doing things. Um, we did even the band never uh, it was never all in, in the room at once. It was all everything was all just um, you know adding uh, different files and all that. Well, you said very funny stuff when you were describing the album by calling it the comedy metal Chinese democracy, only that it didn't cost $13 million to make, which is great. And I'm curious, <laughs> with spending that much time with that many guests, if there was a lot more songs recorded or demoed than actually used? No, what, what happened, though, is there was one song we weren't allowed to do that we did demo, and uh, we were going to do a parody of... Um, um god what's this it's an elton john song and uh and we weren't allowed to a oh, rocket man we were gonna we had a i had a funny thing about being a, a rocker dad that drives a you know um the whole i changed the whole song and made it about taking my kid to school in my minivan but uh cranking metal while it was well you know while doing it and and uh elton john didn't love it so uh he didn't allow us to do that that's the one song uh everything else there's no extras but since recording it i've already come up with like three song ideas for the next record so i can't wait to uh get back in there and not take as long this time well, that brings up an interesting thing to me, that you spent six years or so making this album. And of course, in that time period, there was a stand-up album, there was a new book, there's tons of tour dates, there's tons of acting gigs. When you were creating, do you know which project that you're creating for immediately? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I love that. I love being busy. I love having a bunch of things on my plate at once. Um, I kind of have to live like that. Uh, um, if I'm just on a TV show or if I'm just touring, I go a little crazy. Um, if I don't have these other outlets, you know, um, whatever that is. And, you know, even the, and then the stuff that you see, there's a ton of other stuff that doesn't get made. You know, there's, there's all the pitches and things that I'm trying to keep busy with. And, you know, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's how I live. I'm sure that you still have to pitch things in terms of projects where you're the voice, but aren't you kind of at a point in your career where people know what your voice and your persona is and the projects are coming to you rather than you having to audition so much? Yeah, that happens. And, um, and I, and I'm totally happy that there are people that go, Oh, he can just do this. And, you know, but, but no, I, I, I do still have to audition for a fair amount of things where they'll go, well, we know him, but we want to hear him, you know, say these words and the, you know, without automatically getting hired, which is fine. You know, it's part of the gig. Well, one of the projects that I really discovered you off of was the comedians of comedy. And that kind of opened up my mind, a lot of people's mind that you were a comic book guy. I can't remember when I first learned that you were a metal guy though. Do you remember which project that you kind of put that into the world in? 
Well, people say it was like my Slayer joke, but I feel like I had touched on it before. And uh, my first Comedy Central special, I have uh, my backdrop is like a, it's not a PT folder, but it's uh, like one of those composition notebooks where I had uh, written, you know, like Slayer rules and Maiden all over it. And that that was when I think, uh, you know, that was the first time where I was like, Hey, you guys, this is, this is me. You know, it, it had happened in my stand up just kind of organically. And, it, you know, because the more I talked about what I'm actually into, the more, you know, those things became apparent, you know, that it's just me being natural on stage. And that didn't happen until the mid nineties. Before that I wrote, I just wrote jokes and it didn't matter what they were about. But then I started to be like, well, you know, uh, take a, 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 a clue or, an, or take a, you know, a, a cue, excuse me, from um, alternative comedy where it was more about, you know, being really personal. And so that once I started being more personal on stage and talking about actually who I am, that's when, you know, uh, I started writing jokes about the things I'm nerdy about, the thing, music and comic books and, have, and uh, you know, horror movies and all that stuff. And on the metal end, and Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> and Star Wars, hence the cover of your last book and all that. But on the metal end, what yeah. was the gateway band or artist that really got you in that direction and away from pop? Well, Kiss was the first, but then after Kiss, it was just uh, anything heavy, you know. And uh, so it was that one, ACDC, Van Halen, and then and then in the you know as in the early eighties when music started to change and get heavier, I, uh, you know, uh, sought out those bands that uh, totally into, you know, Maiden and then Metallica and then that whole scene, all the other thrash bands. And yeah. So you didn't really go towards say rad and Dokken. It was more kiss. And then that led to the heavier stuff. Oh, well, I liked, I liked both because I, well, <laughs> I always, I, I never really cared what other, metalheads or other rockers liked i always liked whatever i lo i wanted to like so at the same time i was getting into metallica i was into rat and Dawkins, and i liked the first two motley crew records you know they kind of lost me uh with home sweet home and all that stuff uh but then got back on board in the end of the 80s but um yeah i mean at the same time i liked thrash i also liked you know i liked anything that was guitar driven really uh and you know, there were a lot of shredders in hair metal as as there were in, in thrash and then just in, you know, all the guys that were also putting out those solo records of, you know, Jason Becker and Marty Friedman and all that stuff. I got into all that, too. I liked anything that was kind of that was heavy. You know? Wow. I had no idea that you went into the shrapnel records uh, discography and all that. But going back to your music, you said that you've already started writing for the next album. Is that something that you might have done within the next two or three years? Yeah, I'd like to. I mean, I I, I hope people like this record. And, and if they do, uh, I, I want to follow it up. And I already have some just in the last couple of weeks, things that have made me laugh that I've uh, you know like, oh, there we go. I think I'll be in better shape going into the studio this time than I was, you know, uh, than I was the, the first time. And is one of the goals of this project to be able to really take this on a proper tour or do you really just see it as a long term studio project? Yeah, more of the studio thing. But I we have talked about Scott and I going out, Scott Ian and I going out and doing uh, a, a smaller tour uh, and then not a full not a full metal show what we would do is do uh you know each go up and do spoken word or stand up uh and then do like a half hour each and then i bring them out and then we talk together and then we do a couple of songs together that's that's the plan we did that on the mega cruise and it went really well and we had a blast and uh so we talked about doing a version of that in the next year or so. And then I'm going to do some videos, at least two, possibly three from this record. And then, uh, you know, that's, that's really the, the promoting and touring aspect of it. And then hopefully uh, Megaforce wants me to go do another one.
Hope so as well. And you mentioned liking having multiple projects going on at the same time. Do you think we might see another book from you in the future? Yeah. I mean, I'm, yes, definitely. I have a novel I'm, I'm uh, hacking away at, and then I also uh, have some comic book stuff uh, that's brewing. Great. So two quick questions, and then you're a free man. And the first one is, what's the last concert that you went to for fun? Oh, boy. Uh, what was that? Um Maiden, I think, yeah, uh, it was this uh, this Maiden tour. Was uh, that the show with Fozzie opening up in Los Angeles? No, I missed I missed the LA show. We went to um, we went to Portland to see it, and uh, missed the opening band. I think it's I think it's uh, one of the band's kids, anyway. Right, Lauren Harris's band. Cool. So, in closing, Brian, any last words for the kids? I hope they dig the record. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm stoked to finally have it out after uh, after after these six years. I'm I'm happy to be playing it for people other than my wife and kid in the car. Right, right. Okay. Well, glad uh, to hear that it's out. Glad there's another one in the works, and hope to see you live in New York in the near future. Really, thank you for your time. Thanks, man. Have a good one.